Hi, welcome to my channel, Imperfect Woman of God. Today I'm going to do a Bible summary on Titus. Um, it is written to guide Titus, you know, it was written in the book Titus about the Greek believer in his leadership of churches on the island of Crete. Um, chapters 1 verse 5, for the reason I left you in Crete that you will set in order what remains appointed elders in every city as I directed you. Paul encourages the young believer Titus. Very, very young boy. Okay. Ch uh, chapter one, Paul gives uh, qualifications about how to choose leaders in the church, the overseers to be above the reapproach. He also warns the other ones to be aware of the rebellious man and the deceivers to turn away from the truth. You know, those are deceivers telling people to turn away from the truth, you know, causing havoc in the church. To be aware of that. That's uh, verse 10. Chapter 1, verse 10, where he's like warning them to be aware of the rebellious man. Men that are non-believers trying to cause, you know, confusion in the church. Um, chapters 2 through 3, Paul teaches his teaches how believers may live healthy inside and out of the church. You know, he told them to live godly to be prepared for the coming of Jesus. Paul describes how Jesus rescues us from sin. That is chapters two, verse 11 through 13. Um, when a person first places their faith and trust in Jesus for salvation, they are saved from the penalty of sin. This is a justification. Um, chapters two, verse 11, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation unto all men. While the believer is worshiping and serving God on earth, they are saved from binding the power of Jesus, you know. Um, chapters 2, verse 12, instructing us to deny ungodliness, worldliness, desires, and to live righteously, you know, in present day age at that point. Um, when believers... When the believer's life end, they will go to Jesus and God. Here they live with him for eternal life. They are safe, protected from the presence of sin in this glorification. Um, chapters 2, verse 13, I wrote that for a reason. Looking for a blessed hope in the appearing of the glory of the great God, the Savior Jesus Christ. Um, chapters 1 through 7 through 8, for, who, the, for the overseers as God's stewards must above reapproach. He must not be arrogant, quick-tempered, drunkard, violent, or greedy, lovers of himself, self-control, you know, upright, holy, must be disciplined. You know, pretty much he explaining the, you know, what an overseer should do and should not do in the midst of this. It's like a comparison, the qualifications, but pretty much for that. Um, chapters 10, chapters 1, verse 10, for there are many who are empty talkers, deceivers, Especially those of the circumcision party, you know, he's just talking about the, the the deceivers, the people that are trying to again lead people astray, the non-believers trying to cause confusion in the church. Um, chapters two, verse two: Older men are to be sober-minded, you know, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, in steadfastness. Um, chapters two, verse four through five, and so the train. And so it says, train the young women to love their husbands, children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to her own husbands, that the word may not be revealed. You know, because I feel like we live in a, that's a very relatable now, because I feel like we live in a world now where women aren't being this. They're not training the children. They're not having self-control. They're not living a pure life. We live in a generational now where being pure and being submissive and being kind to your man is looked as kind of different because, again, you see a lot of women that now in this generation are very independent. Um, they're not that kind, you know, they're not that submissive. They don't want to have children. So they're, they're doing the opposite of what the Bible says, but I've been realizing it, you know, and that's due to, you know, Satan causing confusion and, again, in a way, messing up the way God wanted you know, the structure to be, which is man, woman, and then children, you know. Um, chapters 2, verse 6 through 7. Likewise, urge the younger men 
Mm. Excuse me. To be self-controlled, to show yourself in all respects, to be a model of good works in your teaching, to show integrity and dignity. Young man, that's what you're supposed to do. Have self-control. You know, be a good model of good works. Show integrity. Have dignity. You know, chapters 2, verse 8. And a sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that a component may not put to be put, be put may not be put to shame. Look, having nothing evil to say about us, you know, live good, so that a person live right, be the light, so that no one can say anything about you because you're living according to the word, and you're recognizing and you're unlearning sins and things like that. Do not, in a way, be a hypocrite. You know, be one of those Christians that. Say you're a Christian or say you follow God, but the way you act and the way you do things is like the opposite of that. Um, chapters 3, verse 2 through 3. To speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, to show perfectly courtesy towards all people. For we ourselves, once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves slave to various passions, pleasures, Passing our days in malice, envy, hated by others, hating on others, <laughs> to be honest. Um, basically, he just saw in like a comparison of how you are now and not to speak evil against people. Because, again, you, no man can tame the tongue, but at the same time, you don't want to speak bad on others. You know, you don't want to be one of those people, you know, because you're once you get saved by the Lord, you become a new you, you know, become a. I guess you would say a better version of yourself, to be honest. And you have to put away all these foolish things you used to do. You know, you can't do those things anymore. You can't keep allowing the devil to lead you astray, being disobedient to God's word, being hateful and mean, um, just doing things you don't supposed to do. Once you get saved, you have to read the word and understand what you cannot do so that you do not do it. You know, you have to kill your flesh every day. Um, chapters 3, verse 9, but avoid foolish controversies, you know, quarrels about laws, things like that, genealogies, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Do not get caught up in that stuff. I feel like a lot of people are get a lot of people, some people that, not a lot, some people that I've met, they get caught up in the history, things like that, the controversies. They get too caught up in the wrong stuff and they lose sight on what God put you on earth to do because you think you know everything, you know, my like King Solomon, he's the wisest king. You have to be very careful not to let your own wisdom kind of in a way cloud your judgment, to be honest. And you lose sight on what you're supposed to do because you didn't got caught up in the foolishness of this world and things, history and all the other stuff. You're getting too caught up in the wrong things. Now, I meet people these days that I tend to get caught up in the gene genealogies and the controversies and things like that. Yeah, I get caught up in that and you lose sight of what you need to do in life. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's Titus. Very simple, short, tiny, I guess you will say, book. Um, again, the book was written to talk about Titus, a Greek believer in the leaderships of the churches of the island of Creek. You know how Paul tries to, you know, basically let you know about the qualifications of being an overseer, um, the qualifications of how to be a woman of God, a man of God, how to live godly outside of the church and inside of the church. That's what a lot of people need to work on in the church, is to learn how to live godly outside of the church. That's what you can learn from Titus and Paul, you know, he teaches, you know, Titus, you know, but how to live a godly life outside of church, not just in church. That's not good enough. That shouldn't be good enough for you. You know, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't want to be a peer or be one of those Christians. Like myself, I used to be one of those Christians. Go to church, listen to a sermon. Don't even write no notes. Don't even take it seriously. Go back outside of church. Continue to sing. Continue to cause havoc. You know, like Paul said, you have to live a godly life outside of church and inside church. Not just in church, outside, in, outside, in. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Um, that's a summary for Titus. Very short summary. Have a blessed day. And yeah. I like my little cross. It's cute. Y'all like it?